Uh, we have with us uh, up here in the newsroom today Steve Newman, um, who I know is one of those uh, and characteristic of those who rescued someone yesterday and managed to take him across the river to Liberty State Park in New Jersey. Mr. Newman, are you there? Yes, I am. Um, just please, if you wouldn't mind, you look a lot fresher today than I bet you did yesterday. Uh, that's, that's for sure. Uh, just tell us what happened and if you can insert your own story as part of the overall picture of what was happening. Sure. Well, I was in a livery cab about two blocks south of the World Trade Centers when it was clear there was a fire in one of the towers, but all everybody that was in the streets, of course, there was all, uh, all the traffic had been stopped. Nobody really understood what was going on other than that there was a fire. Um, it was, you know, shortly thereafter that the plane flew above and everyone heard it and saw it go right into the South Tower, where pretty much a lot of fear and terror um, started overcoming and seas of people started flowing south down West Street. Uh, that's the point that I got out of, a, out of the car and headed over towards the water, heading west. And um, as I was doing that and got to the west side of the street, I saw an individual coming down that was clearly, uh, he was completely burned from head to toe and all of his skin had come off his forearms and his face and his hair was all gone and uh, looked a little disoriented. So he was seemed to be on his cell phone, either talking to somebody or trying to reach somebody. And um, I asked him what happened. He, uh, what was amazing about his story was that he was in the lobby of World Trade Center One when the plane, the first plane hit. And when the debris started coming down, he went back to go into the building to protect himself and was in the revolving doors mm. going back in off West Street when he looked up and a fireball came flying out, I guess from the elevator shafts, he, that's what he seemed to believe, and blew out all the windows and threw him back onto the street and obviously, you know, in a fire flash, seared all his skin. But apparently nothing, uh, you know, all his clothes, mm. none of his clothes were burned. Um, so that was pretty amazing and he was shaking and it was clear that he needed to get to a hospital and realizing what was going on I said the only way you're getting to a hospital is to get o over to the other side of that river now, How did you how did you know at that point that because there was quite a movement from this tip of the lower west side of Manhattan across to Liberty State Park in New Jersey. How did you know to get across to New Jersey and not go somewhere else in New York City? Well, I worked down in the World Financial Center, which mm. is where I was heading to, and I know it's about a 10-minute walk to a subway. Uh, you'd have to walk right past those World Trade Centers, and I didn't know where any hospitals were south of there either. So to me, and I see mm. those ferries out my window every day, and I said, if you get to New Jersey, there won't be traffic, there won't be police, because all the traffic was stopped where I was. That seemed to me to be the only way to get this guy to a hospital, and it was clear that he was going to be going in a shock soon, and so it just, uh, that we, we just saw, was the we, most logical thing that appeared to me, that we had to get him over to to a, one of those ferries. We saw a lot of ferry traffic on, on, on the Hudson River as it now spills down there in, mm. into New York Harbor itself. And was there just simply a lot of movement of people going over and getting on ferries? Did ferries show up to help people? Well, that was somewhat interesting because I felt like I was a salmon swimming upstream going against all the traffic which was going south actually. Um, but, uh, and what was also very surreal is seeing all these people coming down crying but no victims I, I the only victim I ever saw was this one individual in the entire time I walked him really? all around the boat basin sat at the, at the ferry there were must have been a several hundred maybe a thousand people waiting to get on the ferries we cleared them out and were able to get this into get uh, um, Ken was his name get him onto the ferry and across the river um, so there were a lot of people there but most people were heading south away from that whole area. Um, and we were obviously heading against the, against the current there. So well, Ken has a lot to thank you for today, Mr. Newman. And I assume you feel pretty good about yourself, at least in one instance here. Well, uh, you know, it was, uh, I guess I would say I was lucky too, because when we crossed the river and got to the other side, a police officer met us and shortly thereafter, the towers, one of the, the south tower came down and you could see where all those hundreds of people were waiting, just what was like in a volcano, 
uh, it comes down a mountain, mm. all that smoke billowing over and covering all the World Financial Center and coming into the water and covering all those people. That was well, where we were at. So, yeah. uh, thank, thank you very much, Mr. Newman. I really appreciate you taking the time. As I said, you probably look and feel better in some respects today than you did yesterday. Now, we're going to check in with the president. We're going to check in with the president in just a minute. And uh, at